Hey everybody, welcome to Chaplin's Time. I am, you can't really see it, but I am sitting in front of this window where there's this just beautiful, you really can't see it, doesn't do it any justice, but I hope you're watching the sunset wherever you are um, with the snow on the trees and on the ground. It's really beautiful tonight, so I'm happy to be here with you. I am going to just light a quick candle for our time together here know that it is here out of shot. All right, I hope everybody is warm and uh, it didn't seem like there were any major electricity outages. This is very special what I have happening here. Um, and I hope that you have gotten through this blizzard okay and I hope that if you did a whole ton of shoveling then you enjoy that activity. Um, I think I'm going to be sore for days but I love getting out and shoveling snow. So, um, and my kids love playing in the snow, so we've had a lot of fun the last couple of days, even though it was a little windy out there yesterday. Uh, it's good to be with you all for this chaplain's time. And I'm excited about tonight because um, if you made it to church this morning, one of the readings that was assigned for this Sunday was one of my most favorite readings, and it's from the book of Jeremiah. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, this reading from the book of Jeremiah today in chaplain's time. But before I talk about a reading from the book of Jeremiah... I am going to talk about a, a movie because my family was a little late to the game, but yesterday in our blizzard day, we did watch Encanto for the first time. My children have been resistant because they're mostly scared of movies, but I have been wanting to watch it. I've heard great things. The movie lived up to the hype. Um, and I highly recommend you're watching this movie, uh, even if animated movies maybe like aren't your thing. Um, but um, it's just a really beautiful movie and uh, great music and it brought a lot of joy to our life yesterday. But you know the premise of this movie, it's about this family that lives in Colombia and they're kind of enchanted. They have this magic. Everyone in the family has this magic and the main character is this young woman named Mirabel who for whatever reason was not given a magic gift even though everyone in her family was. And so the kind of arc of the movie is about her just finding her place in her family and trying to figure out how to live into whatever it was that she was meant to be and meant to do. And she struggles because she compares herself to everyone else in her family and she can't feel, she can't figure out why she wasn't given a gift. And um, it's a really beautiful story just about family and how, you know, um, beautiful and messy. You can maybe hear my family in the background right now. Um, families can be. It's just um, part of our experience of family and it's nice to see it just reflected in a movie that way. So anyway, so she goes through this experience of kind of living into the person that she is and appreciating um, all of the things that she brings to the table and that she brings to her family over the course of this movie. So it's in my brain and I've been listening to the soundtrack nonstop, just like a lot of people do. Recommend the soundtrack as well. Um, it's really in my head when I was um, reading this Jeremiah passage. So um, you probably have heard this Jeremiah passage before. Of course, I don't have it in front of me. I'm just going to paraphrase it. But it's, it's Jeremiah telling the story about how God said to me, the Lord said, I know the plans I have for you, plans that I had when I formed you in the womb and I know you, right? These are pretty well-known verses of scripture. They're beautiful, right? This idea that um, even though this is specifically the prophet Jeremiah's story, it's easy to hold on to this idea that God forms us in the womb and knows us before we even come into being, right? And God says, I have great plans for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm. And it, this story is Jeremiah's calling story, right? It's the story about how he felt called into being a prophet and how God called him into his ministry on earth. Beautiful, beautiful story. That's not why it's one of my favorites. Why it's one of my favorites is what Jeremiah says back to God is, <laughs> hang tight. I am way too young for this business you're calling me to. There is no way I can speak these words you're asking me to speak because I am too young. I am only a boy. And God says back to him, yeah, no, your age doesn't matter. Um, you are, <laughs> sorry, I don't know if you can hear Sam, um, who is also young. Um, there's no such thing as too young when I am calling you into um, ministry, into a life with God, into... Um, 
into being the fullness of who you were intended to be. It does not matter what your age is. I'm, I'm really kind of putting a lot of words in God's mouth. It was much shorter than this in scripture. But I always resonated um, with this story in my own call to ministry because I felt very young at the time and absolutely incapable. I still kind of feel that way most days. But I think it's so important to talk about this story because for all of us, like one of the reasons this movie Encanto is so beautiful is that we all work to find our place in our family and in our world and in God's world and in God's kingdom, right? Um, and we all want to find that best version of ourselves that we are, I think, meant to be, right? That we are like, that our life as humans is about growing into that best version of ourselves so that we can um, serve God and represent God in this world and be with one another and be in connection with one another. And it's so easy to doubt that, right? Like this main character of this movie, she's just comparing herself to her siblings. She thinks she doesn't have anything special. And I love seeing that reflected in scripture, that Jeremiah, who was prophet enough that he gets his very own book in the Bible, that his first set thing that he says back to God is, no way, I can't do this, I'm too young, right? Self-doubt is a really normal part of our human experience. And I think it's so good for us to hear this biblically. And by the way, this is not the only story in the Bible where someone's first response to God is, no way, I can't do this, right? Like Moses says, I, I can't speak. And like so many people upon hearing, upon hearing like God call them into some new stage of their life, say like, I, can, I don't have what it takes to do this, right? And, um, you know, God gives us what we need to be who we are in the world has given us these things since our very, very beginnings. Um, and so just the message I want to offer you today, which you could get this message like just as easily and with more singing and enjoyment by just watching Encanto yourself. But I'm just going to back up the beautiful message of Encanto with this passage of scripture, right? Which is that self-doubt, right? Thinking that we don't have what it takes is really, really normal. And you should not take it as a sign that you shouldn't do that next thing, right? You should take it as a sign that self-doubt is normal, but not a sign that God's not calling you to something important. And um, believing that God has equipped us with whatever we need to do whatever it is that is in front of us. Um, so the next time you hear that little like trickle of self-doubt in your mind, don't believe that, okay? That's just your own voices <laughs> because... We just do that to ourselves, right? It's just your own stuff telling you that you're not good enough, telling you that you don't have it, um, but you do. Because God, <laughs> sounds so contrite, God has made you special, but God has made you special. Um, and you have tremendous gifts that we need you to share with the world. So please do not listen to your own voices of self-doubt, but know that God has formed you in the womb and knows you and has wonderful, wonderful plans for you. Good night, my friends. Be well.